Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So as promised, I told you guys I would kind of create my build for you guys uh, for Grimdon, and this is my level 85 Conjurer, uh, which is in the hardcore uh, ultimate difficulty. It's pretty much done a uh, majority of the content in the game, and is a very solid build in class. It is self-found approved, um, if that means anything for you guys. Um, and I figured I would go ahead and demonstrate. Well, I can't really show you guys too much content with the character. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead instead show you guys the build outline and kind of what it should look like. So, um, let's go ahead and get in the game first. Grimdon, uh, please, let's wait for you to respond. IDKY. And... Almost. 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 Kappa. Alright. Okay, and we're in. So this is the Conjurer that I'm playing now. If you guys have watched the live stream, then you guys will know all about what the character is like. So, first off, I'm going to go ahead and hover over my gear for you guys. Or actually, no. First, first we'll talk about the build on Grimcalc. I'm going to go ahead and make it for you guys. Um, and after that, I'm going to go ahead and explain the pieces of gear that I'm using. Now, this is not a 100% finished build. Um, you know, I only played the game for a couple days, about a week to be exact. And I only worked on this character for a couple days as well. So, uh, let's go ahead and talk about it. So, it is a occultist shaman, uh, which creates a conjurer. Now, with this, you want to start shaman first, and you're going to go into devouring swarm. This is the first thing you're going to want to get. You don't have to max it right away, but what devouring swarm does, it allows you to pretty much have a leech mechanic. 62% of your attack damage is converted to health. It also lowers their vitality resistance by 77%. Uh, well, well, you know, right around there, 60 or 75%, which is very, very important for the build. So, after this, you want to go ahead and put 5 more points into Shaman. We're going to pick up Mogrogen's pack. If you have some issues with, you know, sustaining energy, you can go ahead and max it and pull the points out later. It's no problem. Uh, it's, a pretty good, it's a pretty good skill, but I keep it at 1 point. Uh, furthermore, we're going to go ahead and pump up to 15 points here. And we're going to grab 10 points into Heart of the Wild. You don't have to get this yet. Uh, this is something I picked up around... I think the end of normal or around uh, the next difficulty elite. So this is up to you, but always just put one point in because it's still, it's great. All right, so next up is kind of like the, the push. If you don't want to do this now, then you can go ahead and go, uh, you can go occultist now. But what I did is I put all the way into 40 points and you want to max out your storm totem which is your main damage source, and you want to max out Corrupted Storm, which is just one point. This converts all this damage, your lightning, into Vitality, which then allows it to apply via Devouring Swarm. So that's that's a really good way to scale the damage. Um, you can get Oak Skin if you want. I have it maxed right now just because I'm in Ultimate and I need Pierce Resist. So this is also something that's situational. When you start getting like gear for plus one all Shaman skills, then having one point allocated in skills makes a very significant difference. So this is pretty much all we're doing for Shaman, we're literally done with it. Let's go ahead and move back to Occultus now. Occultus is going to be the second class you pick up, and one of the first things you're going to get is one point, one point to Curse of Frailty. Curse of Frailty gives you a movement speed reduction, which is really nice, but the AoE is really small. So it's totally up to you on how you want to do it, but um, ideally you're going to want to have about 8 points, maybe five, 7 points around there into Curse of Frailty. And you want to max out vulnerability. Now, to my knowledge, you can you can uh, clarify if uh, you think you're correct. But I'm pretty sure, according to a forum post I read and just damage testing in game, that vulnerability stacks with the shaman's debuff for devouring swarm. And here's why: devouring swarm scales off your not attack damage, but is considered like an attack. 62% of attack damage converted to health, whereas curse of frailty is simply a curse. If you have two curses, the debuffs will not stack if it's the same property. If you have an attack that's applying a debuff, it will stack with your curse. This is what I've been informed of, and that's the way I've been playing my character, and I'm pretty sure it works. Anyway, moving on. Um, I've got one point in Solaire's Witchfire. It's not bad. One point for 1% offensive ability, plus you're going to need it for later on. So uh, we're going to move up forward. We've got Consecrated Blade, which gives you 33% vit damage for three points. It's not bad. It's okay. Um... Sigil of Consumption is very important for the build. It adds quite a bit of damage, but mainly it's for the sustain that it gives you. Uh, so you can choose whether or not you want to max it now, or if you want to go ahead and rush into possession. That is totally up to you. It's your choice. Uh, for the sake of this video, let's get Sigil level 12. And let's start pumping points all the way to 50. And bam. Alright, so when we're here, 
you have to get possession. Possession is like absolutely required. Possession gives you damage absorption, which is essentially mitigation. Gives you 135% vitality damage, which is a steroid. And gives you 135% chaos. And you'd think to yourself, well, why do I need chaos damage in the build? And here's why. If you look over here, Doombolt. You want one point in Doombolt. You could go more if you'd like, but one point is all that's needed. It does a shit ton of vitality damage and chaos damage and does reduction to their max health. So things like those tanky rares, you can pretty much insta nuke them. I think my highest Doom Bolt, and it's only level like 4, has been I think 60k, which is not bad. It's alright. We're going to go into second right. Second right gives vitality damage and chaos damage. Mainly for the vitality damage. What I did personally, which is something you can do as well, is I spec'd in a second right. And then respect and then put into the occultist points. And then pick the possession. So does that make sense? Because second right is not at all comparable to possession. Alright, so for my remainder points, I went into Shaman and I picked up Oak Skin. Uh, let's see, what else did I pick up? I think I'm missing something from Shaman. Let me actually go ahead and look at my character in-game really fast. Oh, I have, I have Grasping Vines, but I don't use it. Oh yeah, Wendigo Totem, that's right. Wendigo Totem. So, Wendigo Totem is... Uh, it's kind of like a situational thing, but it's really good. So basically what Wendy Wendigo Totem does, and I put one point in the Blood Pact, is you place a totem down and it kind of pulsates. And as it pulsates, it heals you. It also deals damage to targets. If it didn't deal damage, I probably wouldn't pick it up, I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, but it's pretty good. As for your last remaining points, it's totally up to you and how you want to do it again. Uh, Heart of the Wild, I'm still a, absolutely required. Um... Heart of the Wild, again, I picked up around Elite difficulty. So this is pretty much it. Like, the last 20 points is up to you. You know, if you don't need the Pierce, you can go into Blood Pact. If you don't want Blood Pact, you could max out Blood of Dreig, for example, which gives a crap ton of life regeneration, which is actually really, really good for the build once you start scaling uh, life regen, basically, which you're able to do. Uh, so it's pretty much up to you at that point. And I'll have this linked down below. So anyway, let's talk about the actual gear on the character. And again, if you want to see gameplay and stuff, if you look at my stream, you can look at my stream highlights, or actually just Pat Broadcast, or just look at the previous videos on the YouTube, and you can see this character in action. Alright, so, going on with this character as to where I'm at now, I figured I'll show you guys my Devotion Tree, and then I'll show you guys the gear. So, as for the Devotion Tree, I'm spec a little bit different, I'm spec for party play. Um, in Grimdon, I do believe this part I'm not 100% sure on, but I was told that in party play, you take more damage than solo. So for party, I spec for tank. I'm basically the tank for my party. I can tank almost everything in the game. Um, I'm, I don't die. I'm a brute. So, what I did is I've got, um, I've got Sailor's Guile. And the reason for Sailor's Guile is it gives physique, it gives, uh, reduction to, to CC. It gives cold and lightning res, which is whatever, but it gives physique and movement speed. And I think movement speed is one of the most prior, like, should be like one of the most prioritized stats in this build. I've got Lizard to scale uh, health regen, but all this is pretty much adding up. All these blues, like the Doge is, is absolute dog shit, but everything is adding up to pick up Tree of Life, where Tree of Life gives 8% life, 15 flat health per second, 12 health, 30 defensive ability, 15 life regen per second, health regen by 40%, and then you get Healing Rain. Now, I will say that Tree of Life is actually shit, and the reason why it's shit is because the game is fucked up right now, um, and people are telling me this is intended. I'm pretty sure everyone that's saying it's intended is a little special. Basically, if you have Giant's Blood on, Giant's Blood is a passive chance to proc. When it procs, you get a flat amount of health restored plus a percentage alongside with 260 life regen per second. If Giant's Blood procs at the same time of Tree of Life, which considering Tree of Life is on 50% of the time, Tree of Life will override Giant's Blood and actually cut your regeneration. Which doesn't make any sense because it increases your regen by a percentage. Giant's Blood increases it by a flat amount. The flat amount outscales a percentage, and for some reason it, it does that. Um, I don't really know why. It was kind of silly. So what I I might do is respec my entire build back to deeps, which is basically uh, picking up Bat as well. And Bat actually adds a crap ton of damage because you have 15% chance of vitality decay, which I believe procs off anything. Um, and then you have Twin Fangs, which is pretty poopy, but it still adds free damage. It's 935 to 1500 top end vitality, which procs off your regular skills. So some of the main things to pick up in this, I would say, would be Wendigo. Wendigo is a really important guy. Uh, you get Vitality, Vitality Decay, Spirit, Casting Speed, which works for your Totem, less damage from Beats, again, Vitality uh, Decay damage, and then you get Wendigo Mark, which gives you a 100, well, gives you a chance to basically apply an attack to a target and then heal based off the damage dealt, which is really nice for Devouring Swarm, which ticks all the time. 
even though it's got a 12 second internal cooldown. Uh, I went Behemoth. Behemoth uh, pretty much unlocked Wendigo for me because I needed the points allocated. Behemoth gives me life regen, uh, health, constitution, flat health, life regen again, and giant's blood. I pretty much went almost 100% defensive, as you can see. This is hardcore, so. Uh, and then, going from the right-hand side, we've got Tortoise, which I didn't pick up, actually, until the end game. But Tortoise is really nice because it gives you a shield when you need it. A lot of people say Tortoise is shit at higher ranks because it's only, like, a 2k HP bubble. But it gives you the shield when you're at 40% life. It doesn't give you the shield randomly. It's when your health drops to a certain value, you gain a shield. And I think anything that, you know, prevents you from taking that spike damage is really is a really good tool to have in hardcore um lion is okay it's it's flat life well percent life then flat life and then percent all damage targo is really good for three points in you don't need to finish it you basically just come in for 400 life plus five percent life and eight percent life tip of the scales is pretty good uh you start here so you get 250 flat life alongside with health regen flat regen 10 percent life Two, per, or two energy regen per second alongside with 15% energy regen, 15% all damage, and then the tip of the scales proc chance, which is pretty insane if you guys read it. And that's pretty much the devotion tree. Um, again, I was specced into like, I was specced into Gallows and Bat, and that gave me a bit more damage. Bat mainly, Gallows is pretty poopy. Um... All right, and now to go over the gear. Now, again, my gear is not 100% optimized. As you can see, my stats are not properly capped for ultimate. Um, I didn't really get enough time to, you know, finish this character in a couple of days. But it's, it's doing pretty good. So, here's what we got. As for your weapon, you're looking for a Spirit Crusher. Um, I don't know 100% how Spirit Crusher procs with this. This one, I don't know if it actually stacks. But nonetheless, regardless of its stacking, it gives 76% vitality damage. Uh, gives a chance to reduce offense and defense ability. Um, gives you a flat amount of offense ability. Gives 34% vit resist, which doesn't matter because you have like 6 million. But regardless, you get uh, Curse of Crushed Resolve, which gives you a chance to lower their attack speed, their cast speed, um, lowers their health regen, and vitality res. I've got this. Uh, the component that's in it is the vitality damage, vitality decay at the bottom. But I have Void Ward, which basically gives me maximum Chaos Res, but it gives me Bleed Res, which is important. As for my offhand, I'm using Sacred Text of Men here. Um, this is actually a pretty good piece. It's 44% all damage with a large amount of health. Uh, life Regen, Energy Regen, Health Regen, CDR. Men here's Blessing is very good. It does stack with Giant's Blood and everything else. So its uptime is like 25%. Uh, it gives you 20% defensive ability and 150 flat life per second, which is nuts. I've got a resistant ruby ring of untamed. Uh, I've, now, what I have in here for components are just soul shards. You can replace it with whatever you want. Inside here, I've got an aether ward aura, which gives aether res. Um, so that's pretty much this ring. It's just a defensive ring. My other ring I found was sigil of the depraved, which gives vitality damage, chaos damage, energy, offense, cast speed, and plus two to possession. The plus two to possession is pretty nuts. It also gives a proc chance, which is doom bolt. So anytime I get hit, I have a 10 second or a 10% chance to pretty much nuke a Doom Bolt, which does insane damage. I could probably hit like 40k plus with it, uh, depending on the type of monster. So it's pretty good. I like it. Amulet we just got the other day. Uh, this is actually my last upgrade I got. It's called Avatar of Mercy. Very insane amulet. 5% to all max res. Reduce petrify freeze stun duration by 40%. 37 to all your resistances, which would be fire, ice, and lightning. 39% vitality res, which sucks ass, but it gives me Avatar of Mercy, oh, sorry, Mercy, which when my health drops below 30%, I heal 50% and then gain mitigation, which is really nice. And it's a 40 second cooldown, which is actually really short. All right, moving on, I'll move down to here. We crafted a Mark of Divinity, which Mark of Divinity gives me 5% to maximum fire, cold, and lightning, which actually allows me to get to 90% of my resistances. Um, and... Uh, it gives 20 elemental resist, 5% pierce, a good amount of health, life regen, and it gives me divine light. When my health drops below 30%, I heal an additional 10%, which is 40%, which puts me at basically, excuse me, 80% life. Um, and, or is it, no, 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 it's more than that, because this is, okay, this is 50, this is 50, this is 10, that's 60. So I go to 90% life, uh, gain a bubble and become immune for 3 seconds. So I basically have a second wind, which Soldier has, except I've got it through items. Um... My Sash of the Blood Lord 
give it's okay it's something i'm i'm planning on replacing the reason why i'm using it is uh it gives me leeching nova which has a 2.5 second recharge and anytime i get hit by melee attacks i can basically explode and heal fully that's literally what it is because it deals 2200 to 2700 vitality damage that's before applying penetration and 100 percent of the damage i deal with it is leech back to life so this is basically a 25 or 20 percent chance to heal fully that's what it says I'm using Ancestor right now. There's a lot of better relics I could use, but these are a pain in the ass to create. This gives 21% all damage, plus one to all skills in Shaman, six defensive ability. Um, the, the other effects don't matter, it's for pets. But basically, the plus one to all skills in Shaman allows me to have a Storm Totem at level 22, which gives a six chain. Um, it also gives me one point in everything down here, which sucks because every point after max of heart of the wild is only one percent life and not four percent so i was kind of you know sad panda about that but that's life all right going on with the rest of it we've got bone weave leggings vitality damage vitality decay uh plus two to sigil of consumption and plus two to wendigo and then it can create a sigil of consumption when i take damage which is very very good because again that's more healing that's more sustained 40 percent of the sigil's damage is converted to life sigil is this skill that you'll see me use uh, it's actually every level of sigil increases the radius, so getting over-leveled sigils is actually a really good thing. And my sigil, I believe, is 16 of 12 right now. Alright, going on to the fiend skill jacket. Vitality damage, vitality decay, health. Uh, I don't use the, the plus two blood pox or black death, but it gives me contagion, which anytime I get hit, um, I basically apply a dot to people and hit them for vitality damage. Leech them per second. I think, I think the leech is a dot, I'm not really sure. Um, but it's one second skill recharge. A really nice sustained piece of gear. Going on to the boots, void walkers, foot pads, uh, vitality, vitality decay, movement speed, spirit, plus two to sigil of consumption, plus two to destruction. That is the passive right here. So destruction and sigil, you can see them right there. Furthermore, you get void walker, which is really cool because it gives you a 100% chance at a 20 second skill recharge that basically absorbs up to 4,000 damage of vitality and chaos, and the shield will last until it's expired, which is really cool. Uh, and then you have a chance of chaos retaliation, which is whatever. Or I think it does deal chaos retaliation, I'm not 100% sure. My boots, or my, my gloves, I'm looking to replace. The only reason I'm using them is because they give plus two storm totem, that's it. It's plus two levels to my storm totem. My pauldrons, I'm looking to replace as well. Um, they're pretty much just used for nothing. Uh, that's, yeah, uh, that's my pauldrons. And last is my helmet, which is probably arguably my best piece of gear. 34% um, all damage. Gives me pierce resist, energy regen per second, elemental resist, reduced stun duration, 4% CDR, plus 3 to storm totem, which would be right here. And you can see my, my storm totem stop in is 3500, which scales way more because, again, my, my highest... I think my highest storm totem hit has been in, like, the 30Ks somehow. I think, like, a storm totem is ticked. With like a crit on like super reduction for like near 30k. Um, if you add like all the procs and everything else. That's pretty much the character. Like I said, if you guys want to see some content on it, just go back and look at, you know, the previous videos. Um, this guy is is a very strong character. Again, it's in hardcore ultimate and I hit level cap. Uh, we've done the last boss. The only things we haven't done is, uh, I guess, nemesis monsters, but we're taking a break. And we haven't done whatever the guy is that you spawn from the shrine. I can kill him in normal, no problem. Where's his, what's his face? The guy who spawns, like, right here. There's, like, a shrine right here. Um, him. That's pretty much going to conclude the video. If you guys liked it, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, I will have the Grim Dawn Cal linked to you guys in the description about an hour after the video comes out. So, have a wonderful time. I hope to see you guys all tomorrow. And take care, everybody.